Welcome back to Unfiltered. Joining me now is the 45th president of the United States, Donald Trump. President Trump, thanks so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. Well, thank you very much, Dan. Good to be with you. Sir, so when you were in office, you declared an emergency at the border in April of 2020 when you realized the problems you were going to have with the coronavirus. Apprehensions right. at the border dropped to 16,000, 16,000 after you made that decision. President Biden's done the exact opposite, and apprehensions at the border are upwards of 200,000. This is a total failure, isn't it? There's never been anything like it. We had the safest border, the most secure border in the history of our country, and now we have by far the worst. Hundreds of thousands of people are pouring into our country on a monthly basis, and we're talking about millions of people, millions and millions. And the worst of all is other countries are emptying out their jails and prisoners are coming in. And these are rough prisoners. These are the toughest prisoners you'll find anywhere. And they're coming into our country totally unchecked. And it's a disgrace. There's never been anything like it. They're destroying our country. Mr. President, you had a big win, an endorsement of Mike Carey for, for Congress. Big win for you and your endorsement over there. What are your feelings about 2022 and 2024, if you wouldn't mind, given the Democrats' obvious overreach, defunding the police, uh, inflation out of control? We don't even have a southern border anymore. Your feelings on 2022 and where the Democrats' uh, luck may be? Well, I feel very good about it. We also had a big win in Texas. So we had two Republicans running. We won three months ago, a big one, and we got two Republicans running, no Democrat. And the Democrats that voted, of course, voted against me. But uh, that was a tremendous win. And then we had the big win in Ohio. That was more of a normal election. And uh, Mike won by really a lot. I mean, he what he did was uh, fantastic. And uh, he trounced the opposition. And some very good people in that opposition, by the way. But Mike Carey is going to do a fantastic job. He's got an election coming. He's got an election coming, but I think he's going to do very well in it. Mr. President, where do you stand on this explosion and reemergence of mandates? You know, we, we get it. We've, we've heard the science on the vaccine. Uh, I, we get it. It's a serious threat to virus to at-risk groups. Everybody understands that. Uh, you didn't have as much information when you got in office. It was a new virus, obviously. Where do you stand on these mandates? Well, first of all, could you imagine if I were president right now and we had this massive attack from the coronavirus, you know, now they like to call it the they have new names and they have other new names, but it's exactly what we had. We had the same thing. If that were me, they'd be saying, what a horrible thing, what a horrible job. I don't ever hear that, you know, and these are numbers in some cases that are equivalent to what it was, uh, but we don't hear that. I think this, uh, I have to be a big vaccine fan because I'm the one that got it done so quickly. We got it done in less than nine months. It was supposed to take five years. They would have never even gotten it done. So I'm a big fan. At the same time, I'm a big fan of our freedoms. And people have to make that choice for themselves. And I would recommend that they get it and they get it done. And they're being protected. And the vaccines turn out to be a, a tremendous thing. And uh, I also, though, feel strongly there are some people that do not want to do it. And uh, I really believe in uh, somebody's choice, somebody's freedom. And that's the way it is. The mandates are crazy. And what they're doing with schools now, now they don't know whether they're going to keep them closed or what are they doing. The teachers union now is in flux. All of the things that are happening, uh, people have to get back. The kids have to get back to school. They do very well against the coronavirus. They do unbelievable, or as I call it, the China virus, because that's what it is. It's the China virus. That's where it came from. came from the lab. I said it came from the lab. Now they're all saying, well, I guess he was right about that. But they used to take people off. They probably still do. They take them off Twitter. They take up their deep platform people when you said it came from the lab. But it came from the Wuhan lab, and uh, it's a disgrace what happened frankly, a real disgrace. Yeah. Mr. President, that uh, that segues into my next question I was going to ask. The media coverage during your administration was uh, an abomination, and that may be selling it short. I mean, it was really atrocious, whether it was yeah. the Wuhan lab leak, which looks likely at this point, and accurately, um, you said that in the beginning and pointed that that could be a likely scenario. But one of the other things I find odd is, you know, you were very gracious to Democrat governors during the crisis, whether it was Governor Murphy you had at the White House 
or uh, Governor Cuomo, even though you have obvious political differences. You sent the comfort up there. And these Democrat governors had a really terrible record. Their deaths per 100,000 people are the worst in the country, in New York and New Jersey. And yet now it's the opposite approach by the media, sir. Now Joe Biden's in the White House, has his own crisis to deal with, and Republican governors, Abbott and DeSantis, all of a sudden are the enemies. Odd, no? Yeah. Well, it's a, it's a great way of phrasing. It's very interesting. You know, I used to do a, a weekly call. We would have a weekly call with governors and all governors, Republicans, Democrats. We'd have 50 governors on plus because we'd have people from the islands. We'd have others. But we'd had 50 governors, and they were very gracious, and they would say, what a great job we did, unbelievable job. And then some of them would go out and do a press conference and say exactly the opposite. It was disgraceful. But uh, I could, and by the way, we could write a book on governors. I, I, I am the king of governors because I could tell you the good ones and the bad ones. And you have some very good ones and you have some really, really bad ones, both parties. But you have some good ones and some really bad, bad ones. But I noticed the way they're going after DeSantis. I noticed the way they're going after our great governor from Texas. And he's done, Greg Abbott, he's done a you know, really good job. Ron's done a really good job. Uh, but they're going after Republican governors. I, to a much lesser extent, did that, unless I thought they were doing a bad job. Some obviously did a horrible job. I mean, they've destroyed their states. It's going to it's going to be years before they can really come back. But no, it's a uh, it's a total double standard, and the press understands that. But the press has been unbelievably dishonest and corrupt. Yeah, I mean, it's incredible how the governors, again, were heroes in your administration, despite being goats, yeah. and now the opposite story, because you're out of office. Uh, let me move on to a different topic, if I may. Cori Bush, member of the squad, uh, she's a congresswoman. She came out this week and reignited calls to defund the police. This has been an absolute apocalypse for the Democrats, even though Joe Biden, during the campaign against you, was on the record saying, yeah, he'd be for reallocating some money away from police. This is right. going to be a disaster for them in 2022, isn't it? Well, I think it's going to be. I think we're going to do very well. We've done a great job. Look, we had the strongest border in the history of our country. Uh, another two months, we would have had the wall completed. Now they're paying billions and billions of dollars not to build the wall, not to complete it. We would have had it done in two months, maybe even less than that. Got to be painted or it's going to rust. They know that, but they don't want to do that either. They are just... Who knows where they're coming from? Look what's coming into our country. Who knows what they're doing? But I will tell you, uh, I watched her the other day. I watched the hatred. I watched the, the statements that she was making. And, uh, no, she wants to defund, and they want to defund. You know, it's not a popular issue. So they're trying, some of them are trying to back off it. But they want to defund the police. They want, like, the uh, voter ID they don't want it. They don't want voter ID. Now, every once in a while, you'll see them come out, oh, absolutely, we love voter ID, because they're seeing poll numbers. It's 88 percent positive. So some of them are now saying, look, we can't ruin our political career over it. So all of a sudden, they're saying, we'll accept voter ID. It's, it's disgraceful. But they want to defund the police. And tell me that makes sense. Look at what's going on in New York. Look at the Look at the crime in New York. Look at this, the incidents that happened where they're beating up elderly people in the streets, beating them up, and the cops aren't doing anything. And our prosecutors, they're just after Republicans, guys like me, the prosecutors. They should be the, I think uh, the biggest problem is our prosecutors in New York and other places. They go after Republicans, but if you kill somebody, you're okay. It's a disgrace what's happening. And I don't think the country's going to stand for it much longer. They're, they're disgusted. They're destroying our country, whether it's at the border, whether it's on crime. I could say in plenty of instances, including military, you look at the leaders of military, the woke, the woke leaders of military, we have to focus on our great military for what it's supposed to be, to protect us against very powerful countries like Russia and China and others who don't exactly love us. Mr. President, can you stay with us through this brief break? Yes, go ahead, Dan, sure. Thank you. We'll be, we'll be right back with former President Donald Trump. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Unfiltered, and we're back with former President Donald Trump. Mr. President, uh, you've always, when you give speeches and you see an American flag, you made a point to grab the flag, hug the, hug the flag, embrace yourself in our country. You've been very proud of our country. 
Yet we have athletes in the Olympics supposedly representing our country, deciding it's a good idea in front of an international audience to embarrass the country and, and take a knee. And you see ratings plummet as a result. Your, your thoughts on that? Well, the ratings do. It plummeted for the NFL. It plummeted for baseball. You see what's going on. But look at the soccer team, the women's soccer team. All of a sudden, they're not like they were. They were supposed to win the gold medal. But you know the word woke means loser. If you're woke, you're going to lose. That's and right. ultimately, we're not going to let woke make this country into a loser. But you watch that, and I watched some of the people, and I was very proud that some of the young women on the soccer team stood up proudly, and they stood up proudly against uh, all odds with uh, what they have to put up with on that team. But the word woke is loser, and our soccer team did not get the gold medal, uh, and they frankly didn't even come close to it. And uh, we, we are, uh, look, the country doesn't like it. I don't like it. And a lot of people have turned off to sports. Uh, LeBron James, they don't like him. The NBA didn't do great, but they did better after he was out. Uh, they don't want this. There's enough of it. They want to watch sports. They want to watch great athletes. They don't want politics in the middle of their sports games. And that includes the announcers, too. I hear some of these announcers. Uh, they're not big shots, that I can tell you. But I, I listen to what they say. And you just want to turn off the game. And many people do. You see the ratings, how bad they are. Yeah. Mr. President, I appreciate your time. Been very generous with it. Uh, one question for you about school closures. This is a hot issue right now. The teachers' unions, remarkably, we saw a story out at uh, Fox News about the Chicago's teachers' unions, which is implying they could shut down the schools again now. Parents, understandably, are really fired up. This could be upwards of three years of their children's lives uh, taken away from them. No social interaction, no school. It's just not the same on Zoom. It's just not the same thing. Your thoughts on that as a father yourself? Well, first of all, you mentioned Chicago, and let's talk about crime before we talk about that. But they're both just horrible. But where 70 people get shot over a weekend, 70 people, and many of those people die, in Afghanistan, we haven't lost a soldier in a year and a half because of what I did. In a year and a half. Yeah. And yet in Chicago, you have 70, 80 people being shot some weekends. It's a disgrace. As far as the schools, the, the schools have to open. These young people are losing a big part of their life, and they're not going to recover from it. The schools have to open. What they're going through socially, I mean, they, they, they're not dealing with people. I don't think they ever — it's going to leave a scar on their lives. It's going to leave a psychological scar. We have to open our schools. I say let the teachers get the vaccine. They should get the vaccine. I hope they do. Again, it's something I'm very proud of. I think if we didn't come up during the Trump administration with a vaccine, you could have 100 million people dead, just like you had in, in 1917. You take the Spanish flu, 100 million people, up to 100 million people died. I think we'd be in that territory. This has been great for the world. But the Teachers, let them go, get the vaccine. I don't know how they're being dealt with. They have different unions, but they have one in particular. They don't want to ever go back to work. It's crazy. Yeah. Our children need to be they, they need to be educated. You know, it's, it's turned out computers are wonderful and all of that. But one thing we've learned through college and school, the undergraduate everything, is that being in the school is much better than looking at a computer screen. That's one thing almost everybody universally agrees to. And the children have to go back to school. Mr. President, last question, and we'll let you go again. Thanks for your time. The Biden administration has taken a shot at your economic record, which is kind of hilarious given how awful of a job they've done. Uh, they're claiming, uh, they're comparing the rebound from the coronavirus, the lows, um, to your record. Now, when you got into office, GDP grew well over the average of the eight Obama yeah. years. That's got to upset you, given everything you did to juice the economy at the time, tax cuts and everything else. So the reason that it's our economy is doing well right now, relatively well, is because of the foundations that we built. What they're doing and the numbers that you're seeing are because of us, not because of them. Plus, what they're doing is a lot of artificial stimulus is being added in, which makes numbers look a little bit better. But the reason we're doing well is because of what we did. If you look at just prior to the virus coming in from China, we had the greatest employment numbers we've ever had. We had 160 million people working. 
African-American, Asian-American, Hispanic-American, women, uh, people with diplomas, without diplomas, high schools without and with diplomas, everybody at the top of the line. In the history of our country, it was the strongest. And again, we've never had 160 million people working, not even close right now. So we had the best numbers we've ever had. Then we had the virus come in, and then I rebuilt the economy a second time. And they're just going off what I rebuilt. That's all they're doing, because they're killing the economy. You're going to have inflation. It's going to eat us alive. We were energy independent. We're no longer energy independent. I don't know if you saw, Dan, but they went to see, and they had meetings with Russia and OPEC to see if they would get us more energy. We had so much energy, we didn't know what to do with it. We were $1.87 a gallon for gas. Gasoline, and now we're up to four dollars and fifty cents, and it's going much higher. So what they're yeah. doing is going to destroy the economics of our country, and maybe more importantly, what they're doing at the border and other places, and with a lack of respect that other countries have for us, our country is being destroyed. Mr. President, thanks for your time. It's an honor to speak to you. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much, Dan. Bye. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.